Hi, I'm Pastor David Wendell, Assistant to the Bishop for Ministry and Ecumenism in the North American Lutheran Church. This is my sermon for Christ the King Sunday, November 21st, 2021. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the Praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews, but my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I've come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're not the boss of me, my daughter Rebecca yelled at me once, quite a long time ago. She was little, probably four or five, but in her frustration, she voiced her feelings as best she could. And what she said, said it all in that moment. You're not the boss of me. Even at four or five, she wanted to run her own life. She didn't want someone, some dad telling her what to do from her perspective, bossing her around. So she let me know in no uncertain terms that in spite of what I thought, I was not her boss. In some ways, none of us wants a boss. In this recent pandemic, there's been great tension and conflict over whether government, the head of the CDC, governors, the president can claim to be boss of us, telling us what to do and what not to do. In our society, we accept the fact that there are some who are boss of us, Judges, usually police officers, maybe, maybe our boss at work. We accept it, but we still sometimes chafe against it. We accept them, but we react against them. And many of us are always looking for ways to get out from under our bosses, ways to work the system to our advantage. Ways to do what we want to do and not get caught. A way to be our own boss, call our own shots, be masters of our own destiny. Be your own boss is a phrase that has tempted many to quit our jobs, buy into get-rich-quick schemes, go off on our own so that we don't have to deal with someone else telling us what to do. Do this, don't do that, work harder. And yeah, there's a certain part of that that grows out of our healthy independence and our adventurous American spirit that creates new business and industry and initiative that's made our nation great. But there's also a certain part of that that's just egotistical and arrogant and unwilling to be an employee rather than the boss. And the difficulty with that is it translates also at times into a mentality that says to God, hey, you're not my boss either. That's pretty much what Adam and Eve said to God in the Garden of Eden. When they decided to eat of the forbidden fruit against God's specific command to the contrary. In their decision, they were saying, you're not the boss of us, God. You can't tell us what to do and what not to do. 
And that's been the hue and cry of most of humanity from that time on. We don't want a boss, and we don't want a God involved in our lives telling us what's right and wrong, telling us what's true and not true, telling us what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. We don't want a boss and we don't want a God right there beside us, guiding us, prodding us, challenging us, confronting us. Oh, most people will tolerate a God, a small G God, who affirms us and lets us do whatever we want and doesn't get in our way. That's why New Age religions are flourishing today, still today, because they offer lowercase g gods and goddesses who are all about making you feel good and feel right and feel affirmed, whoever you are and whatever you do. They affirm that you can believe whatever you want and nothing will be required of you. Many encourage you to be your own boss and why wouldn't that be attractive to postmodern man and woman? Why wouldn't they seek an alternative to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who gave the Ten Commandments and called people to obedience? Why wouldn't they seek a lowercase g God who would not be so demanding as God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? A God who wouldn't be so insistent on repentance and righteousness, on dying to self to rise to new life, a God who wouldn't be trying to show you the error of your ways and to lead you on the narrow way. Many people today don't want a God who is boss of them in any way, so they turn to other gods, or if they find none suitable, they create their own. Or better still, they turn away from any notion of God, choosing instead, like Adam and Eve, to be their own God, doing whatever they want, whenever they want, with no one to tell them any different. I wonder at times if that isn't why there are so many men raised in the church who as adults refuse to participate in the body of Christ. Do they feel they've got enough bosses already? So why submit to an ultimate eternal boss? And while it might make you uncomfortable talking about God as boss, while you may not want to push that analogy too far, on Christ the King Sunday, on the festival day when we celebrate Christ as ruler of the kings of the earth, Christ as sovereign of all nations and peoples, Christ as Lord of all that exists, doesn't that mean in a crude, earthy, but honest way that Christ is to be boss of us, that we are indeed to submit to him as our ultimate eternal Lord. That's what it means for us to not only celebrate Christ the King, but to submit to Christ as our King, to submit to Christ as my King, in some ways, this festival is a little hard for us, Americans at least, who have never had a king, who refuse to submit to a king, even refuse to make George Washington our king. What we know of kings and kingships, we know most of us from London tabloids and entertainment tonight. Having a boss, we understand. And we also understand that the best bosses are not those who lord it over those who work under them, but those who inspire, motivate, encourage, and support those who work with them. Which is exactly the kind of king, if you will, that we have in Jesus. Indeed, the kind who, as we read in Revelation, loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be his kingdom, priest serving his God and Father. The kind of king, as we read in the Gospel of John, whose kingdom is not of this world, does not have a worldly kingdom, does not run by worldly standards and customs and business practices. 
In other words, his kingdom is in the world, but not of the world. His kingdom exists in this world. Jesus was born to this world for the sake of truth, to testify to God's truth, so that people could hear his voice and know the truth and belong to the truth. As Jesus is this kind of king, what does it mean to be his followers, servants, employees? What does it mean to belong to the truth? To understand that, we have to understand what the Bible means. What the Bible means, not what philosophy or culture mean by truth. In the Bible, truth is a road one can follow with complete trust in order to have life abundantly and eternally. This truth is contained in God's law because truth is something to be done, something to commit one's life to. One must be and walk in truth, and we do that by conforming our actions and our whole life to the will, the mind, the, the word of God, so that his word will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, as it says in Psalm 119. Jesus was sent by the Father to testify to that truth, and he taught it by words, actions, and finally by his death. He became and he is the way, the truth, and the life. Consequently, those who belong to the truth hear God's truth in the voice of Jesus, keep God's truth by following his commandments, and commit ourselves to staying on the narrow way. That is, staying obedient to the truth. It is to submit ourselves to Christ the King, who is indeed boss of us, a king who leads by example, a king who leads by serving, a sovereign who is committed to truth, a king who is for us, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Believe it or not, a Lord who is all in all for us, for we who will submit to him, humble ourselves before him, accept his will, and listen to his voice. Granted, that's not the kind of boss we're used to, nor is that the kind of king we've heard about in history class. But that is the kind of king Jesus Christ is. That is the Lord that we have. When we yield our lives to Jesus Christ, when we turn our lives, our fortunes, our futures over to Jesus Christ. And here's the thing. It's actually not constraining. It's freeing when we receive that and we admit that. When we admit, as the confession goes, there is a God, and I'm not him. It's freeing to know we have a Lord and Savior who provides us not only with guidance and direction in life, a Lord and Savior who not only leads us forward in faith, trust, and discipleship, but a Lord and Savior who gave his life for us on the cross, and was raised from death to win for us, to secure for us, for you and for me, grace, mercy, forgiveness, and salvation. Not because of who I am and what I do or don't do, but because God's only begotten Son came to give his life as a ransom for many and for you.
So that having this Lord as your Lord and having this Savior as your Savior frees you, frees you now and forever from sin, guilt, and death, giving you freely forgiveness, abundant life, and eternal life. So as much as we may not want a boss, a king, let us pray today that God grant us the will, the courage to submit to Christ our King, the humility to accept him as our Lord and Savior in life and in death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.